Homelessness is everywhere in Crane Country, but the big question is what can be done about it? Tulsa's investigative reporter Jana Clark learned what people are doing right now to help. It's part two of her Fox 23 investigation, Streets to Solutions. I told you how every night in Tulsa, more than a thousand people don't have a place to sleep. Some go to shelters like this one and some just stay outside. The numbers have been growing and you've been asking, are these Tulsans or are they coming from somewhere else? I look into that and what it's going to take to fix the problem. In Tulsa, homelessness keeps getting worse. As soon as you come to the big city Tulsa, you see it everywhere. Everywhere I go, it, it's bad. It's just bad. More people camp outside and stay in shelters like the Day Center and John 316 Mission. Tulsa creates homeless people every week. Uh, people that have just burned their bridges and lost their way. Why is the problem getting so bad? One thing I've heard again and again is that the homeless are given bus tickets in other states and sent here to Tulsa. I wanted to find out if that's true. I had saw an article that Alaska was sending plane tickets or giving homeless people plane tickets um, to come here. Here's that September article that says the Anchorage mayor offered to fly the homeless to a warmer state. 36 since last year. It does happen. Tulsa County Sheriff Vic Rigolato says he's heard of the homeless getting bus tickets to come to Tulsa. Who is sending them here? Do you know who it is, like agencies, individuals? We ask them, how did you make it here from Missouri or from Texas? And it's charitable organizations, it's churches, it's, uh, we've heard business organizations handing out bus tickets saying come to Tulsa, Oklahoma, because let's, let's be honest, we're a very giving city. We have a big heart. I asked those who run shelters and work to help the homeless about that too. I hear this all the time about agencies from other states, you know, buying tickets and sending people to Tulsa. Do you hear that too? Yes, I do. Do you think there's any truth to that? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think it's more of a myth than fact that we're seeing busloads of people coming here that are from other cities. That's more of a misnomer of the other city thing. Um, we hear that a lot, and I know that's a rumor that goes around. You talk to the homeless all the time. Do they ever tell you that? As far as being sent specifically to Tulsa on a bus, to me it's a myth. I've never run into anybody that was specifically sent to Tulsa. Have you ever heard of um, anybody coming here because they've been given a bus ticket to come here specifically? No. I asked dozens of homeless people how they got to Tulsa. Have you heard of anybody being given a bus pass to come here? Come here? No. No one told me someone gave them a bus ticket. I even went to the Greyhound bus station to ask. It's the idea of, you know, other cities basically saying we don't want to deal with the homeless problem and so we're going to put you on a bus to Tulsa. No one here had ever heard of that either. I think there's probably an issue of wanting to blame <laughs> other cities for, for doing this. Some people told me they came here from small towns in Oklahoma. I'm from Tahlequah, Oklahoma. To stay with family, to go to school, or to find work. I couldn't find work in Oklahoma. But many say they're from right here. Where are you from? I'm from Tulsa. West Tulsa. West Tulsa? Where are you from? Here in Tulsa. Where are you from? Uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Where are you from? Tulsa. Right here. Man. Tulsa. Tulsa. Oh, Tulsa. Yeah. Tulsa. Larry Cornelius parks this food truck alongside another truck with Bridging the Gap. Together, they go to different parts of town. They hand out food, drinks, and clothing. I've always felt like I needed to serve, but just in the last three years, I've done it more and more. Seems like there's a lot of need out there. Yes, that is true. They all need drink, they need to be fed, they need to be clothed, so yes, there is a great need, and they're grateful to get it. They are. They say thank you. Thank you, Larry. They fit? Yes, sir. Tulsa Housing Solutions put out a study that says more than 80% of Tulsa's homeless are from here. I think that's what kind of frightens people when you see the real-time data. And the reasons why can be complicated. Many struggle with mental health or substance abuse. Due to an addiction, um, Hydrocodone. Some lose jobs or income. I lost my house because my disability hadn't come through yet. Many say it's a lack of affordable housing. What are you hoping for now? Housing. 
this like my cases in the blue line border. There's, there's, there's hundreds of cases. There's thousands of cases in Tulsa. They're just like my. What do you see as the solution? I think the primary solution is housing. What is needed when it comes to housing in the city of Tulsa? We need over the next 10 years about 13,000 units of housing, and that's across all income levels. City of Tulsa housing director Travis Hulse says people are getting priced out of housing, and quite a few properties have been turned into short-term rentals. There's just not a lot of available housing units in general, and so people aren't moving up and out into other housing options, and so it's making it hard for anybody with kind of a lower income to find those places, and so they end up sleeping on a couch, they end up on the streets. The city set aside more than $100 million and created a 3-H task force to work on the housing and the homelessness problem. Yeah, I think the solution is multiple things at once. I think it's housing, it's supportive services. Housing doesn't end homelessness. Community does. Community is what helps them move forward. A community like Brad Johnson is planning. Permanent housing for people who lived on the streets more than a year. It's a community. It's about relationships. And that's where, if you've been on the streets for over a year, you can't just give them a key and wish them luck, and that just does not work. We have to bring the support services that they need, whether it be mental health, physical health, substance abuse, spiritual health, all these things that they need are brought into the community. They'll call it Eden Village, a group of 63 tiny homes in West Tulsa. Why tiny homes? They're efficient, they're uh, cheap. Compared to living on the street, you have a 400-foot tiny home with a bedroom, a little kitchen, a living room, bathroom. It's like heaven if you've been under a bridge. Brad says it will take a community effort to change the homelessness problem. Right now, it's going like this. We need to not just flatten the curve, but to get it to go down. Do you think the problem is solvable? Well, we're never going to solve the homeless problem overall because the, the issues that drive people into homelessness, loss of family, substance abuse, mental health, physical health, economic factors, those are not going to go away anytime soon, unfortunately. All we can do is solve homelessness one person at a time. And it's not going to happen overnight, but you know, give it five years or so, we can make a dent. Brad says they hope to open Eden Village within a year. It's actually one of two tiny home villages that are going to be opening in Tulsa. And here's the other one in North Tulsa at about 46th Street North and Peoria. And this is one of the model homes that will be here. And it's called City Lights Village in North Tulsa, covering news that matters. Jana Clark, Fox 23 News. Do you have a tip or issue that you think Jana Clark should investigate? Let us know. Email fox23investigates at fox23.com or call 918-388-5354 or search Fox 23 Jana Clark on Facebook.